just wanted to do a quick review and tear down of my new uh, Toolkit RC P200 bench power supply. Um, just going to go over a few things I've noticed right off the bat. Then uh, we're going to hook it up to the scope and check a couple things out. And uh, then I'm going to open it up and see what's inside. Um, I haven't seen anyone else on YouTube do this yet, so here we go. Um, first thing I've noticed is power cord. Pretty sure it's an aluminum cord. Uh, kind of sucks, but for the price, 100 bucks, wouldn't really expect anything less than that. Or more than that, I should say. <clears throat> um, overall, I really like it so far. It looks great. The screen is really nice. If it'll turn on. There we go. Uh, screen looks really nice. I don't know if you can see it well. Um, the the dials and buttons are great. Um, I really like that it has the USB output, and that's a big reason I bought this. I'm not going to really be using it for um, a lot of RC stuff. I'm just going to be using it as a general mini benchtop power supply for my uh, increasingly crowded bench here. Um, so love that it has the USB output. It does USB-C, it does the full USB PD all the way up to 25 volts or whatever it is. Um, and it's got the voltage and current monitor here at the top. So it's kind of a, kind of combines three things into one. Um, just gonna hook up this, this relay coil I have here just to show how it works. Um, set the voltage to 12 volts. There you can hear the re relay clicking, I hope, and off. Um, if you hook it up with something not attached, you can see that it takes much longer for the voltage to fall off here. You really can't see that, can you? Let's see here. There we go. So the voltage is still falling off from hooking it up previously, but if I hook this back up again, and you can see it trailing off here too. As soon as I hook it up though, it goes to zero. We'll do it again. To 12 volts, relay clicks. See it there on the display. And off immediately down to zero volts. So it's discharging whatever capacitors it has in there in parallel with the power supply. Um, do a quick demo of the USB-C functionality too. Just a little pair of earbuds. Uh, these these don't use any USB PD type stuff. It's just five volts. But see there, it's charging. Shows the current one decimal place. Um, it's really nice. And you don't have to have this enabled at all. Um, I wonder if I turn this off. It does turn off the power supply if you have this off. So that's good to know. Go ahead, right back on. Fan's a little loud, but it, it doesn't kick on unless I assume you have a, unless you're pulling a lot of power, so. All right, um, I'm gonna turn the camera off real quick and then we're gonna hook it up to the scope and check out the, uh, the overshoot and maybe the rise and fall time too. All right, so we've got the power supply hooked up to our scope here. Um, still have our, our relay. Here's the load. Um, still learning how to use this scope. And I can't figure out how to how to get a trigger on a rising edge um, single shot. So we're just gonna we just got the time base set to really slow here, and we're just gonna turn on the power supply and watch the volt rise, and then we'll just stop it. And I'm gonna zoom in. Um, so you can see right off the bat, it does a really nice ramp up slowly over. You know, what is that? Two, four, six, almost 800 milliseconds. Um, that's from zero to 12 volts. So that's really good to see. Very little overshoot, which is something I was really worried about. Um, I've seen a lot of the cheap uh, benchtop power supplies on Amazon. Um, 
do like huge like 10 20 percent overshoot um, this is with a load we're gonna do it again with no load in a second but um, yeah that's that's really nice to see I was worried about that um, okay we'll run this again and then we'll turn it off and watch it falling and really nice slow falling also that's you know about 200 milliseconds no sorry it's about 80 milliseconds 100 milliseconds from 12 to 0 so yeah looks looks great to me i'm very happy with it um it shows you that here too there's the falling and then you can see the slow rise too um good to see that this is fairly accurate it's kind of nice um okay now let's do it uh with no load let's see what happens okay no load hooked up 200 millisecond time division um okay let's power on dude stop zoom in looks good here too no real overshoot to speak of right on 12 volts which is pretty sweet okay um, now let's go from 12 to 0, see what happens. I expect this will um, this decay much more slowly, so. Hmm, why aren't we showing 12 volts here? Here we go. Okay. And off. Oh, yeah. Very slow. Let's do it again and see. 12. Wait for it to wrap around. Still going, still going, still going. So yeah, that's those capacitors discharging. Gonna take a while. All right, we won't watch all this. I'm gonna move on to the tear now. Important thing to note so that I don't shock the ever-loving shit out of myself. Um, I'm going to power this on with the load attached and then pull the plug. This should uh, decharge the caps completely so that I can take it apart. Okay, let's tear it down. I'm uh, not an electrical engineer, so I'm only barely going to have anything intelligent to say about this. But, uh, you know, you don't own it until you take it apart, right? So... I also haven't seen any other videos on YouTube which cover a teardown, so it's worth doing just for curiosity's sake. I'm uh, still going to be careful not to touch these capacitors just in case I did not do a good job of discharging it. Just pulled the fan header there. Now this comes out. Nice. Those big capacitors are the ones to be afraid of. Let's um let's see here. Just to make sure. One moment please. Just to be sure I'm gonna hook up my relay load here again and Touch those capacitor leads with it. Oh yeah, <laughs> good thing I did that. Okay. Nice. We're safe. Um, CHN caps. Let me zoom in here. Chinesium capacitors. Again, not great, but uh, what do you expect? Um, is that a fuse?
there's a fuse. Right? I think so. Uh, this is kind of nice to see. Big, nice traces here. Solder, air gaps. Again, not an electrical engineer, but it looks uh, satisfactory to an untrained eye. Um, let's get this board out of here and check it out too. I might even pull this heatsink off and see what kind of transistors we're using. Supposedly, we're using gallium nitride uh, transistors, and we will see about that. Um, looks like I need to pull this off. Let's see if I can get under here. Okay, yep, we're getting under the front bezel here. Gotta peel this back so that we can get to two screws under here. I'm gonna try not to hit the screen and damage it. That would suck. Man, good thing you guys didn't see me shock the shit out of myself earlier, huh? Guess that uh, pulling the plug method is not a great way to discharge capacitors. Okay, and I did hit the screen. Oh, we're good, just popped out. Okay, cool, two screws. Cable connector off. Nice. Front panel is off. And this should a little insulator there. This should slide. Oh, we've got a little glue in here. Okay, I'm gonna pause again while I pick that out. Okay, got the glue loose. We can slide this out now. Nice. Pretty nice little aluminum case. And here's the bottom. Uh, it's pretty standard. Got some big test pad, which is kind of cool. Let's see if we can see what kind of microcontroller we're using. Giga device, it's an arm. F103, I guess it's an STM32 knockoff. Okay, I'm gonna pull these two screws out and we're gonna look at the transistors. Yeah, just got a thermal pad, so that should be easy enough. Nice. Okay, there's our transistors. Let's see if I can zoom in enough on them to see what they are. I cannot, I will get a picture and post the uh, part number.